Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. Hey, baby, how you doing? Awesome. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm trying to get my computer to work for me here, but I have a special guest joining us here on this Friday. Guess who I'm going to talk to today? Who's that? A young lady by the name of Vicki Toback. She has a book called Contact High, and it's actually a bunch of photos that, uh, I don't know if she took them, somebody took them, a bunch of photos of like, um, I'm trying to think of the right words, hip-hop artists over the course of like the last 40 years. So it's okay. it's kind of a cool anthology. I think it's really neat. It's a it's an interesting idea. And they call it Contact High because I saw the pictures. Or it's not like the ones that are – some of them are the famous ones, but then there's pictures before and after that in the same session where they had like a whole contact page. So oh. you kind of get to see some images that you've seen, but you get to see like stuff that happened before and after it too. I think it's kind of cool. So I, I thought that'd be fun to talk about. <laughs> okay. Maya Angelou is our uh, quote for today. You can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. I like that. Ooh, that's a good one. It is. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday. If you have a dog, listen to this. Freshpatch.com is a subscription service that will send you a box with a fresh patch of grass for your dog to use for a few weeks. Then they send you a new fresh patch and you discard the old one. You can throw it in the trash, use it for compost, or even put it in your yard and it'll grow into the ground. Freshpatch.com has thousands of happy dog families who love this concept, especially in the colder months. Try it now for a little less. Use promo code radio to save 10%. That's freshpatch.com, promo code radio. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Friday, the 19th day of October. It's National Kentucky Day, so happy Kentucky Day. It's also National Seafood Bisque Day, National LGBT Center Awareness Day, and National Mammography Day. I remember the word mammography. There was a person who recorded a radio ad. This is 20 years ago, and I'll never forget it. But they pronounced it mammography. <laughs> well, I can see. I mean, if you Just, were reading it, but I can't believe somebody along the line didn't catch it. The ad made it to the radio, and they're like something about mammography. I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. So, national. But it's a mammogram. Yeah. So it would make sense to pronounce mammography it that. day today. <laughs> I can it's, see that it's mammography. I checked. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Radio. It's a pretty amazing marketing tool. But like many tools, it works best when used properly. Like, let's take this weed whacker. I could use this to trim my hair. (laughs) Yikes. Hope that grows back. But that's not what weed whackers are for. Tools work much better when you use them for their proper use, just like radio. If you want help making radio work better for your business, that's our business. RadioReallyWorks.com. Get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Time now for Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? It's where Heidi cheats and peeks on my I, computer over I here. I never was. You've this just got ridiculous. too many of them, right? All right. Uh, this is where we, she has to guess. Is it a rehab center or is it a golf course? This comes away courtesy of TimeForRehab.com. And it amazes me how many times these are like interchangeable, really. It's so, pretty cool. <laughs> Cross Creek. Atlanta, Georgia. Is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Golf course. Golf course is correct. Golf <laughs> clap for Heidi. You know, that one didn't sound like a rehab center. Cross to me. Creek? No. no. Uh, but it doesn't sound like a golf course either. I could see that. There's yeah. creeks in the. Yeah, I suppose. There you go. It's a water hazard. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. TimeForRehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. TimeForRehab.com. That's TimeForRehab.com. And this is Your Brain on Drugs, brought to you by TimeForRehab.com. At this time, uh, we talk about people who do silly things under the influence, but addiction is no laughing matter. If you or someone you know needs help, you can learn more at TimeForRehab.com. According to police, after her boyfriend repeatedly declined her uh, advances, we'll say, she was in the mood and he was not, a Florida woman grabbed a kitchen knife and slashed him a few times in the face. Yeah, that's not good. In a response to a 911 call about a disturbance at a Vero Beach apartment, police arrived at the residence at 3.30 in the morning, and they encountered a man who was bleeding and a woman who had blood all over her clothing, and 
she explained that she was in the mood and he was not. Anyway, turn, what, how does this? Wow. Mean? Where's the drugs part? It's got to be. Well, drugs I'm sure in- she was. I mean, that's not something you would do sober. I'm trying to find that in the story. I don't see that. What are clothing? It's you know, isn't that interesting that it is that situation? Isn't it usually the other way around? The uh, guy is in the mood and the woman is not. That's just so bizarre. Why yeah. would a man be saying no? Ever? I don't. He was <laughs> maybe he was tired. I have no idea. I don't see anything in this story about drugs. I wonder why I put that here. I apologize. I think you probably just assumed, I, I, and I, I'm pretty sure you assumed correctly. It doesn't say it in the story, though, so that is just bizarre. I apologize for placing this story here, but <laughs> now we all know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, Pamela Anderson. Remember her? Wasn't yes. it Pamela Anderson Lee? Was that what it, when she yes. first okay? Now it's just Pamela Anderson. We know her as anyway. She has joined no, and not her. Her son has joined a reboot of The Hills. So there you go. It's What's her son. The Hills. It's a TV show. Did you watch it? Uh, no, I've never seen it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what about. it is. I'm thinking it's about hills, ah. but I could be wrong. Is it a golf course or is um, it a rehab center? Neither. <laughs> is it probably about Beverly Hills, and they just refer to it as The Hills? I think. I don't know. I could be way off. Mm. Uh, Demi Moore made her Instagram debut about a week ago. It was last Friday, so it was like a week ago Friday at the uh, the wedding of Princess Eugenia or Eugenie. Eugenia. How do you say that? Eugenia? Is that how you say it? I believe so. I don't. I don't follow this stuff. Uh, in London, so Demi Moore made her Instagram debut. So she's just finally getting on Instagram. Hey, Demi, I'm even on Instagram. <laughs> I'm not on there a lot. I'm not. I'm not on there much. I think but, I have an account, but I'm not on yeah, it. Yeah, well, Facebook started an account for us because we have Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Uh-huh. And then what do you know? We have Instagram.com slash John and Heidi Show. I didn't start it. It just popped up one day. And I was like, oh, well, now I guess I have to do this all the time. So there you go. This has been Big Screen, Little Screen on the John and Heidi Show. Radio. It's a pretty amazing marketing tool. But like many tools, it works best when used properly. Like, let's take this weed whacker. I could use this to trim my hair. (laughs) Yikes. Hope that grows back. But that's not what weed whackers are for. Tools work much better when you use them for their proper use, just like radio. If you want help making radio work better for your business, that's our business. RadioReallyWorks.com. Get better results with the money you're already spending. RadioReallyWorks.com. Now your scoop of the day, courtesy of FreshPatch.com, promo code radio. A Rasmussen poll has President Trump's approval rating at 51%. So I'm just putting that in there. We don't talk politics here. We're not saying anything. I won't say anything. Okay. I just want to put that in there because if, if we don't, you know, that's news. That's big news. And I just want to make sure we share that. A new study finds that nice people are more likely to go bankrupt. So you think? Yeah. That's oh, yeah. I agree with that <laughs> completely. Because like, it, we're just give too, everything away. Too darn nice to charge what we should charge, and always helping other people. Yeah. Uh, kind of, kind of sometimes fall in that category. A naval officer was arrested after he assaulted a man at Bush Gardens in Williamsburg. What in the world happened there? I wonder what led up to that. That just seems like a bizarre Maybe thing. Maybe he saw somebody with stolen valor and wasn't having it oh, or that something could be. like that. I See, mean, it, it doesn't wouldn't... say. I have a link to the story if you'd like to read all about it. It does not say exactly what happened. Massachusetts Senator, again, we're not talking politics, but it's a story. So uh, keep your political comments at bay. You, why are you looking at me? Be- <laughs> <laughs> Who else would I look at? Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren is in the news because (laughs) she released a DNA test that claims there is strong evidence to suggest that she has a Native American ancestor six or ten generations ago. Would Would you stop it? So those who claim she has no ancestry, you're wrong. So six or ten generations ago. Again, Steering clear of politics here. Let's just move back. On I don't need to say anything you to that. So. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are expecting their first child. Oh, that's so exciting. Is it? I, I really know. don't care. I think it is. It must be. It's in the news. So it must be. <laughs> they're going to honor her mother and they're going to name this little girl. It's a girl, by the way, uh, that they're expecting. So I, I, that seems. How do they know this early? Isn't this kind oh, of early? She's probably okay. further along. I'm sure that they told others before I just they found out. told us. <laughs> you mean they let other people know before they let us know? Come on, Megan and Harry. 
Where was I on this list? Anyway, they found out it's a girl. I'm pretty sure she didn't just get done peeing on the stick. I'm I'm pretty John? sure this has been. <laughs> this is John. Is this John from the John and Heidi show? Yeah. This is Megan. You'll never guess what. Guess what? Okay, I gotta go now. I have to go tell Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's going to name the baby girl after her mother. So the da- baby's name is going to be Doria. D-O-R-I-A. Is that her mother's name? <laughs> Apparently. No. Chinese government threw a blogger in jail for five days when he disrespected the national anthem. Oh, see that, what happens in other countries yeah, when you do that I stuff? I think that might be a bit extreme, but, you know, it's kind of crazy. And uh, a squirrel knocked out power for 2,000 homes in Ooh. New Jersey. So I'm not sure what that squirrel was up to, but... I bet everybody's upset, the nasty little squirrel. <laughs> and then finally, Amy Winehouse is going on tour in 2019. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, didn't she die? <laughs> and the answer is yes. But here's what this is. This is crazy to me. An Amy Winehouse hologram tour has been booked for late 2019. Is this new technology? Is it? Are they just watching a video? Is and that what it is? And if it's new technology, why apply of all people? Did she have one song, right? She, well, yeah. And, and it's sad that she passed away so young. But if if I were going to launch a hologram tour, I don't know that I would start there. I would start no, with maybe Elvis. Elvis Presley. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are or, so many so, yeah, amazing so many. people. And again, nothing against Pr- Amy Prince? Winehouse. Heck, bring Prince back. Or Michael Jackson. Or, you know, <laughs> but I think it's just interesting. I've got a link to the story. And I kind of wonder, I don't know, I wonder how yeah. it's going to go. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We have a special guest joining us today, Vicki Toback. She is the author of a new book called Contact High, A Visual History of Hip Hop. Now, you've been taking photos for a long, long time, and for the last 40 years, you've got quite the collection of this particular genre, don't you? Well, indeed. I'm actually um, the writer of the book, but the the photos uh, span about 40-plus photographers and over 40 years. Um, so the book was really a way to celebrate the people behind the lens of all these iconic images. Very nice. So there's multiple different photographers, and you kind of put them all together then. Indeed. Yep. Yeah. They, um, you know, as early as the late 70s, photographers were starting to document the early days of hip-hop, and as the art form became uh, mainstream and, you know, progressed during the years, um, different photographers were working at different times to tell that story. Very cool. As I was uh, kind of scrolling through the photos here, and I apologize, for some reason I was thinking that you took the photos, but as I was scrolling through, I noticed there's a lot of them that are in black and white, and then there's some newer ones that are in color, and there's quite the progression as you've gone through. What was it that made you decide to put the particular photos that you have in here? Uh, how did you choose those? There's got to be thousands. So when you're going through and, you know, picking out the ones that make the cut, what was it that you were looking for? Yeah, so there's, I mean, there are certain photos now that are sort of part of hip-hop collective conscience. Biggie, Smalls in the Crown, the Baron Claiborne, King of New York shot, um, you know, Jeanette Beckman's photos of Run DMC, uh, Mike Miller's photos of Tupac, um, all the way down to more recent photos of, you know, Kendrick Lamar. Um, and I really wanted to sort of tell this long history and also um, talk about different album covers, talk about different magazine covers, the choices that were being made in, uh, you know, putting certain images on those covers. So I wanted to make sure we got iconic images, but also, very importantly, the photographers who really dedicated their lives to, to photographing. Now, this is a very specific subject. So how was it that you came to the idea that, hey, this would be a really good idea for a book? So I actually started uh, when I was 19 years old working for an independent hip-hop label called Payday Records Empire Management, which at the time, you know, in the early 90s, was putting out some of the most important hip-hop uh, there was with Gangstar, J. Ru, Show and AG. Um, and so I, I worked with the artists. In early in my career uh, on their photo shoots. And then after I became a journalist um, and started writing about culture and broader themes, um, 
I thought back to, you know, how did those photos really tell a story of who the artists were? And so I wanted to pair the contact sheets, uh, go back into the analog days, bring up photos that have never been seen, and then um, tell that bigger story. And the thing that's interesting to me is how photography has changed over the years, because back in the day, if you wanted to take a photo, you had to have this thing called a camera. Well, nowadays, it's like you can snap a photo because it's on every phone that's in every pocket. Uh, so it's it's interesting to look at some of the early photos on here. And I understand a lot of these are publicity photos and things where it was set up and it was planned. But just the composition and the time that was taken to put things together you know, back then, I think it's a, a whole lot more went into it than it does today. Now, the, the difference is when you're looking at the ones that, in, that are in the book here, again, this is, again, from a photo session, but I think there are some people, there's a whole generation that maybe needs to understand photography has changed, and back in the day, it was a lot different than it is now, where you just pull a phone out and push a button, wasn't it? That's right, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the, also the spirit of the book. You know, digital is a fairly recent phenomenon, and, phone, you know, camera phones, but Back when, you know, these photographs were being taken, most of them, you had only an analog camera. You couldn't see real time what you were photographing. Um, There weren't as many, you know, stylists and publicists involved. It was a lot more candid. And so contact high is, you know, play on the word contact sheet, which, um, you know, provides all these, like, informal narratives around the shoot. Like, we normally only get to see the final photo in this, in today's day and age, and it's very, you know, perfect or very curated, but by seeing the contact sheet, which was, you know, printed on photo paper, so you can see all the shots that were part of the session, um, you can see a lot of the imperfections, you can see the mistakes, you can see that collaboration between the artist and and the uh, photographer, so it just takes you in many layers deep. Well, I appreciate the fact that you put the time and effort into putting this book together. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us on the radio about it as well. Of course, my pleasure. Again, Vicki Toback has been our guest, and her new book is called Contact High, A Visual History of Hip Hop. It's available now, and we have a link to it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There is a high school in Minnesota that gives service dogs their own yearbook photos. I think that's cool. That is cool. If you get a service dog, the dog should get a photo, too. The dog should be in with you in your photo. Well, uh, either with you or at least in a photo right next to you. Because how weird would it be if you're in, like, completely different pages? You're like, wait, who... Whose dog is this? (laughs) Amy. She's three pages back, but his name is Max. So he's he's way over here. Fun fact right there on the John and Heidi Show. If you have a dog... Listen to this. Freshpatch.com is a subscription service that will send you a box with a fresh patch of grass for your dog to use for a few weeks. Then they send you a new fresh patch and you discard the old one. You can throw it in the trash, use it for compost, or even put it in your yard and it'll grow into the ground. Freshpatch.com has thousands of happy dog families who love this concept, especially in the colder months. Try it now for a little less. Use promo code radio to save 10%. That's freshpatch.com, promo code radio. Time now for the grandiloquent word of the day, and it's flapdoodle. What do you think flapdoodle is, Heidi? Flap? F L A P D O O D L E. Flapdoodle. What is it? Flapdoodle is a uh, noun, words or ideas that are foolish or untrue. Sometimes there's some flapdoodle that happens on this program. <laughs> Especially on the, Tuesdays with Charlie. The foolish part, for sure. <laughs> we don't try to tell you anything that's untrue, but, you know, sometimes it's just a, you know. It is also a polite way of saying it's a load of BS, which I'm not going to say what that stands for because that's bad. (laughs) But uh, here's a sentence for those of you who are waiting on the edge of your seat for a flapdoodle sentence. The facious flamfu is a fountain of flippant falsehoods and far-fetched flapdoodle. All righty then. Today's grandiloquent word, (laughs) flapdoodle. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. 
We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Now some weird news for you. On a Friday, a West Virginia woman is accused of trying to steal a car and threatening to drink the deputy's blood. Oh. And she was hiding a knife in her buttocks. Oh. What? <laughs> this is a Yikes. bizarre story. 37-year-old Jackie Fulmer tried to take a man's cars uh, armed with a hatchet and a knife. So she had a hatchet in one hand and a knife in the other, I'm assuming. Well, I guess we also found out where else she had a knife. Witnesses told deputies that she confronted a victim near a gas station saying, I don't want to hurt anybody, but she was holding this thing like a weapon and she was trying to, you know, swipe their car. Anyway, chase ensued. Deputies found her in a nearby staircase. Uh, they got her with a stun gun. Jeepers creepers, Because she ran it at a police officer with a hatchet. She threatened to stab the deputies in the neck and watch their blood drain as she drank it, is a direct quote. Well, anyway, then. Anyway, she had hidden the knife. They found the knife when they were booking her at the station, and it was, you know, somewhere down under. We'll put it that way. Anyway, she uh, tried to use it to cut a seatbelt in the cruiser. So, bad idea. All of that. And Absolutely. It's definitely <laughs> some bad idea. Definitely falls in the category of weird news. John and Heidi. Now, today's moment of duh. A schoolboy, 15-year-old who attends school in England, was on a trip, a school trip to Berlin, and he had another schoolboy spike a drink with Viagra. <gasps> what? That is a bad idea. That they, is so dangerous. They were in Berlin on a uh, school trip. Eight pupils were on the trip, and they were learning about the Cold War and the Holocaust, and this was the youngster's first trip ever, and he was left humiliated oh, after news of what happened my as it spread around the school. The boy's father said he did it to be nasty and advertised it on Snapchat as well. Oh, my God. The 16-year-old who spiked the drink was suspended for two days. The boy's father said it should have been a harsher punishment. Two days suspension? Absolutely. For putting a child's life in danger is appalling. Now, here's the thing that I think is just weird. The interim principal from the academy, the Ettenbury Academy, said, Ettenbury is aware of an incident arising from the recent school visit to Berlin and has undertaken an investigation into the incident. If I think I would have used a different word than arising. Too. I think so. Too. <laughs> Why would you say that? Because you know that's, that's the butt of all the jokes now. <laughs> So, like, there was a kid that gave another kid of, you know, spiked oh, Viagra that drink. Poor and then, kid. in his quote, the guy saying, an incident was arise, arisen. What do you, no, don't use that. Just say, we know something happened. We're looking into it. I thought that was so weird. I've got a link to the story if you'd like to read all about it's it. Not it's not very hard punishment. Would you just, <laughs> thanks Should for have listening. been a stiffer penalty. <laughs> would you, <laughs> I've got a link to the story in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. John and Heidi. Time now for Fake News or Florida. This is where Heidi has to guess. Is this something that really happened in the great state of Florida, or is this fake news? Okay. Something that was made up just to amuse you. You ready for this one? I am ready. All right. A Martin County man who was stopped for erratic driving told police that his dog was at the wheel. <laughs> fake news or Florida? Florida? It is, it is a true story. You know, to me, that sounds made up. That just sounds – who would do that? But this guy did it. Oh, Martin County my. man in Florida. Told the police that, hey, my dog was driving. That's my dog. Don't blame me. You can't me. arrest me for him driving. <laughs> I told him not to do that. He just won't use his blinker. I don't oh, know why. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. This is another episode of Fake News or Florida. Good news on the way. John and Heidi. 
This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. It comes your way courtesy of Odiva, the monthly subscription service just for the ladies. All the details at radiosavings.com. Here's your good news headline. Do you like the good news, Heidi? I do like the I good news too. very much. Good news headline. Depressed by cable news playing in public everywhere, this man designed some glasses to black out television screens. Oh, it's actually a good idea. That is a good idea. So uh, this gentleman, an engineer in Los Angeles, got sick and tired of being bombarded by endless bad news and television ads popping up all over the place on public screens. So he created a pair of glasses that can block out the tirade of screens. Anything that's like a digital screen, it's just a big ba- a black box when you're wearing these glasses. It says, uh, if you've ever been in queue somewhere, waiting at the airport, waiting for a doctor's office, and they're playing one of the 24-hour cable news mm-hmm. networks, and you just sit there and think, why would they have this? You know, And I think that's weird. In the doctor's office? Yeah, get my blood pressure up while yeah, I'm waiting. Yeah, really. <laughs> so, and it's never good news. If there was a good news network, that would be awesome. Anyway, they say, you ever wish you could just turn that off? Well, you can, kind of. This man was in line at a food truck, of all places, and said, I couldn't escape the drones of negative news everywhere. And he remembered reading about a special kind of film you could use to block out LED and LCD light. So he ordered some and put it on a regular pair of glasses and figured out that, hey, this works. So now he has these new glasses that are called IRL glasses. It stands for in real life. So you can block things in real life. And there's an image that he has on this page showing through the lens, and it blocks out any digital advertisement. It's it's really an interesting thing. So they created a start a Kickstarter campaign to raise some money for this, and his goal was twenty five grand. They raised one hundred and ten thousand dollars with even more. That time should left. just go to show you how sick people are. Yeah, of... people are tired of the bad news and the negativity. Right. So that's why this program we always end on good news, and people love it. So I love wrapping things up with a positive story. I've got a link to this if you want to read all about it. It's in our show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Friday.